Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Um, today I'm going to show you how to grill some sausages. So these are sausages that sous chef Eric made from my restaurant. Um, actually, I'm going to get rid of these buns. These are so these these sausages. I think we're probably going to sell them in kits like this for Independence Day and beyond. Um, but you get four sausages like this. Um, these are our bratwurst, beer bratwurst. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take sauerkraut, about a pound of sauerkraut, spread it out in a uh, in a disposable aluminum tray like this. Um, this is our house-made sauerkraut. We ferment it for uh, a month, but you can uh, you can use store-bought sauerkraut. And then beer is about 12 ounces of beer, so like one bottle basically. This is um, I'm using uh, Czech fire, or maybe this is Trumer. Uh, this is Trumer Pills, which is a, a local beer. Um, Trumer Pills, some salt. Um, the sa so sausages are about two to three percent salt by weight. Um, that's actually where the word for sausage comes from. S uh, sausage, uh, salt, same root as the word salt. Um, and so if you were to just simmer them in plain beer, which some people do, what ends up happening is that salt leaches out and your sausages end up bland. Um, so you do want to add salt to your, um, to your searing, your braising liquid or your simmering liquid. And then I'm going to take my sausages. You dump them right on in there. And this, of course, works. Doesn't have to be uh, doesn't have to be bratwurst. It can be any kind of sausage you want, um, and you can do as many as you want in here, as many as you can sort of fit in a single layer. Um, so if you want to really get a, you know get them nicely tucked in all the way around, um, that works really well. Um, and if you don't want to do you know if you're doing something like say an Italian sausage, for instance, you can also omit the um, sauerkraut and do something like um, you know saute some uh, saute up some. Um, Peppers and onions. Get them in there in place of the. Uh, get them in there in place of the. Oops, I'm gonna use the other grate. I don't know why I have that one out. Get them in there in place of the uh, sauerkraut, and that works well. That works well too. All right, and so what I've done here is I've created what's called a modified two-zone fire. So I've got most of the coal. This is one chimney full of charcoals. I've got most of the coals along one side and then just a few on the other side. Um, the reason you do that is because you want sort of moderate heat to bring the sausages. See, these are raw sausages and you want to get them up to around 145 degrees or so before you sear them. Um, so we're going to use moderate heat and let them simmer, bring that up to simmer um, on the cooler side of the grill. And then afterwards we're going to finish them on the hot side of the grill to give them a nice sear. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to adjust these grates so that they're vents so that they're about half open. Cover it up, get these about half open as well. Um, and now those sausages are basically just gonna cook in there. Um, I will, uh, I'll do a jump, uh, I'll do a little jump cut um, because we're not gonna sit here while they cook, but they're probably gonna take about 20 minutes or so. Um, at one point in the middle, I'm gonna flip them over. Um, so I will come back after uh, the sausages have been cooking for about 10 minutes and that liquid is at a simmer and then we'll flip them over. Um, and uh, yeah, so I will be back in five seconds because I forgot to add the mustard. Um, actually, I, I forgot to add the mustard, then I added the mustard, um, added some mustard and realized my camera wasn't rolling, so I've uh, now re-adding a little bit more of mustard. So adding a couple tablespoons total of um, whole grain mustard into here. You don't need to add mustard, but um, I do like the flavor of this sauerkraut, so just get it in there, mix it around a little bit. Um, you can also feel free to get creative. You know, what's really good in here is if you add some like sliced onions into that sauerkraut and let them simmer down as well. Um, sliced apples, like Granny Smith apples, any kind of sour apple are really nice in there. Nice, nice tart acidic apples are nice in there. Um, you can also do herbs like fresh thyme or rosemary or sage. Um, spices like juniper berries or black peppercorns are nice. Um, you know, get as creative or as uncreative as you'd like. All right, so now I'm gonna cover these and let them start to come up to temp. Um, so I will be back now in six minutes. Um, so I actually decided to come back a little bit early because I realized this grill was running a little bit hotter than I normally run it. Um, so these I think will probably get, yeah, these are definitely going to be done faster than 20 minutes. Um, the idea here, by the way, is that, you know, if you've ever tried cooking sausages over direct heat, um, you know, right on a grill, 
you always end, you 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 frequently end up with a couple of different problems. Um, so one of them is that it could be too hot, and your sausage ends up kind of burning on the outside while it's still raw in the middle. Um, and then frequently, also what happens then is that the sausage bursts open um, because the outside contracts so fast that the inside doesn't have time to catch up with it. Um, and so you know, sausage is just like a steak or just like chicken. Like it's they they're sensitive to heat. You know, they have to be cooked to the right temperature. Um, and a sausage, well. You know, technically they're done at 165 degrees, which is what the government will tell you. Um, I like to take them a little bit lower, so I'm going to get them up to around 145 degrees on the um, in the center, and then I'm going to finish them on the hot part of the grill, um, and that should get them up to around uh, that should end get them up to around 155 degrees, which is what I consider sort of done. Um, if you have a sous vide machine, also you don't have to do this on the grill. You can do this. Um, you can do this in the oven. First of all, you can you can or, or the stovetop. Simmer them uh, in beer and sauerkraut like that on the stovetop. Um, or if you have a sous vide machine, you can cook your sauerkraut with the beers to get rid of the you know the excess alcohol, kind of re um, reduce it down, and then put that all in a bag uh, with your sausages. Uh, cook it at 145 degrees for a couple hours. Take it out, dry your sausages, and finish them on the. Um, in a pan on the stovetop. Um, all right, so I'm gonna be back probably in another six more minutes. All right, so, all right, these are definitely looking like they're done. Maybe even overdone, let's see. So you can see how they've uh, firmed up. The liquid is simmering, which is what we want. Let me temp one of these in the center here. Well, 130 degrees. All right, now we'll, we'll let it go for another. Now, not quite done yet. Probably another, just another two more minutes. All right. We've got to be done by now, all right? Yeah. 146 degrees. Perfect. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these sausages. Oops. I'm going to pick them up. I'm going to put them straight over the hot side of the grill. Also gonna open up those vents all the way. Because we wanna, basically what we're trying to do now is add some color to them. So I'm gonna move that aside just a little bit so that I can uh, toast up my buns. So these are um, top split New England style buns. Um, we get these from, but well, we used to get them from a place called La Boulangerie, which unfortunately due to the um, shelter in place and the shutdowns, um, they severely um, limited their, uh, their selection of breads. Um, so they no longer make these top split buns that we loved. Um, but we now get them from a place called Panorama Bakery, which also makes excellent bread. The The classic New England style hot dog bun is made by Pepperidge Farm. You can find that in, um, you can certainly find it in, in um, you know, supermarkets in New England. It's probably a little harder to find in other parts of the country. But then again, you don't need top split hot dog buns um, for sausages. Um, we just uh, we just do them because it's kind of a nod to my... Uh, well, it's kind of a nod to my New England heritage, and also um, we like them because, you know, this cuts this this surface. The fact that they're split on the top instead of on the side, the way a normal hot dog bun is, means that the um, this surface in between, you can butter it and griddle it, um, so you can add, you know, get a lot of nice buttery griddled flavor onto them. Um, in this case, I'm doing it on the grill, so it doesn't really matter too much. In fact, ooh, look at that beautiful color. So once they're almost cooked through like that, they, you know, once they're cooked through like that, basically all we're trying to do is add some color and take them just those last 10 degrees till they're all the way cooked through. And the color, of course, is just for flavor. And a little bit of texture, you're gonna get them nice and crispy on the outside. Um, this is a really nice technique to have when you're doing like, you know, when you have a cookout with a lot of people that are kind of milling around and you're not kind of sort of just sitting down to dinner because what you can do is you can finish cooking the sausages like this or hot dogs or whatever put them right back in the tray and put the tray over on the coolest side of the grill and with the lid off um by the time you know by the time the sausages are all done cooking with the and, and you have the lid off on the grill um those coals are going to be cool enough that um the the uh, liquid is not really going to be simmering shouldn't be simmering much simmering much anymore Oop. that's a little grease a little grease spurt All 
right. Um, the liquid's not going to end up simmering anymore, so you can put those sausages basically right like this back in there, and they're going to stay warm until uh, you're ready to serve them. They're going to stay warm, in, um, importantly stay warm without overcooking. That's what, that's what I meant to say. Okay, so I'm just going to finish toasting up these grills, uh, toasting up these buns. Maybe I'll speed it up. We will speed it up in fast motion now. All right, so now we got our sausages. By the way, a well-made sausage, even if it rips open like that, um, even if the casing rips open a little bit, a well-made sausage should stay nice and juicy because a sausage that's you know properly emulsified and where the meat is properly mixed, um, the fat um, gets sort of bound into the protein, um, you know, through that protein matrix that you make by mixing salt with meat um, and kneading it the way a, a good sausage is made. Um, a bad sausage, the fat will kind of run out um, and it'll end up sort of pooling up inside the sausage so that when you prick it, you know, you get those like little grease fountains that spurt out. Um, so a bad sausage, if you prick it, all the fat will run out. Um, or if you bite it, all the fat will sort of run out into your mouth. But a good sausage, even if the skin, even if the casing pops like that, um, it should stay nice and super juicy. All right, now we're just gonna get topping with a little bit of our braised sauerkraut here. And this is way too many sausages for me and my wife, who are the only people home right now. But I think my neighbor has some guys working on her fence right now, so maybe I'll go, go feed those guys lunch. Right, and that, my friends, <laughs> my pals, that is how you knock over a st stack of sausages. That is how you do bratwurst on the grill. Chef Eric makes an excellent sausage. All right, everyone, happy Independence Day. Um, you can get these sausages from worsthall.com. Here you go, I'm on. <laughs> it's in between your feet, buddy. Right back here. Right here. There you go. Um, and I hope you all have wonderful cookouts. All right, see you later, guys, gals, and non-binary pals.